Once you've been playing for a wee while, you'll begin to realise that the tonality can change in music between major and minor. Now, major has a relative minor and minors have a relative major. Uh, and the, the reason they've got that is because they share key signatures. Um, and what I'll do is I'd like to go into a bit of detail on how you can easily grab that information and uh, to, you know, to help you understand it a wee bit more. As usual, there'll be chapters uh, in the description below which you can jump about and just, you know, to find a bit of the video that maybe is more, more useful for yourself, all right? The tool that I use to, to you know, show students what the, the, the related major and minors are and the key signatures that they share are, it's called the circle of fifths. Um, strange enough, generally when you look it up on the internet, it will be a circle. Uh, and the, the fifths part is, you know, how the circle's actually laid out. What it does is it covers the information for all 12 keys, and as you go around the circle, if you go, it doesn't actually matter what direction you go in, uh, if you go clockwise or anti-clockwise, it moves in fifths. Circle of fifths, makes sense. For instance, if you start at the top of, of it, you get, you know, you start with C major. If you start to go clockwise, then you go to G, which is up a fifth, and then up a fifth from G is D, and then up a fifth is A, and it works its way all the way around. And by the time it gets back to um, C again, you've actually covered all 12 keys. Now, if you go in the other direction, uh, it goes from C, and if you go counterclockwise or anticlockwise, and if you go um, left, it goes to the F, and then it will go to the B flat, and again, it will work its way all the way back around through all 12 keys when it gets back to C. Just to go into a wee bit more detail, um, maybe some of you have, have actually heard it called the circle of fourths. It really depends on what direction you go in the piano. So for example, if we start on C and we go up a fifth and we're going clockwise, we go to the G, which is a fifth up. And then if we go a fifth up again, we get to the D and it continues all the way. I'll probably run out of keys. Anyway, um, it keeps on going up in fifths. However, if you decide that you want to go down the piano, then it changes to a circle of fourths. Um, we go down a fourth, you get to the G. You go down a fourth, you get to the D. Fourth, you get to an A, and so it continues. Now, it doesn't really matter. Most people call it circle of fifths. If you prefer the number four, then, you know, by all means, fill your boots and actually use that instead. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really up to yourself. The tool is still there to be used. Okay, let's just go into some information on how to actually read uh, what's what's up on the screen just now. So on the outside circles, basically we've got the major keys, uh, and if you look towards the bottom when you get to the likes of F sharp major, you'll actually see the enharmonics as well, which is uh, which would be G flat. Um, just a quick side note: enharmonic just basically means it's the it's a different name for the same note. So if I have a look at um, F sharp here, um, and then look at G flat and play it. As you can hear, it's exactly the same note, um, but it has a different name. Who knows why? Anyway, enharmonic, if you see that word, then that's what it means. The next circle as you move in the way actually shows you the key signatures. So the likes of, you know, you've got your C major that has nothing in the key signature. If you go to G major, you've got your F sharp, or if you go to F major, you've got your, your B flat. And again, it works its way around the whole circle, covering all 12 keys. And the, the last part as well, if you come in again, it shows you the relative minor. So you can actually see from the chart, if you like that, you know, the relative minor to the major shares the same key signature. There's another couple of ways you can kind of figure out um, what the relative major is to the minor or minor is to the major uh, if, you're, if you're stuck. Now, if we take C major, for example, and you can see on the circle of fifths that that, is, uh, that has A minor as a relative minor, uh, and it shares the same, same key signature, so it's got, got nothing in it. Uh, if we were in C major and you wanted to, you know, if you didn't have the circle of fifths and you wanted to figure it out, then there's two ways of doing this. You can either go to the sixth degree of the scale, right? So if I play C major, right? And if I go to the sixth degree, one, two, three, four, five, six, that gives me what the relative minor is, and I'm on A. If you're slightly more comfortable with, with intervals, then if you go to the tonic of the major, uh, and then go down a minor third, that takes you to the relative minor as well. There's a couple of other things that people use the circle of fifths for, and I'm not, not going to go into it in too much detail just now. Um, you can look it up, there's so much information on it, it's, it's frightening. Um, one of the main reasons I use it as, uh, if I'm working on scales, for example, or arpeggios, instead of just going up a semitone at a time, I'll work my way around the circle of fifths, just to give me a bit of variety, because let's face it, 
scales are the, the most exciting thing in the world. Um, so if we can do something to kind of spice it up, then that just makes it that wee bit easier. So you can go around the circle of fifths either clockwise or anti-clockwise, start in one place, you know, and work your way around and, and do whatever. Then that covers all 12 of your keys for you. There's another thing as well, once you get to a certain level and you're working on your working on your theory, you learn about things called primary chords. And if you, if you have a look at the circle again, basically the primary chords are chords one, four, and five. I'm going to very quickly go over this, right? So one would be the tonic, which is the root note of the key that you're in. So if we're in C major, then it would be C. Chord four would be the fourth degree of the scale. One, two, three, four, which is F. And chord five would be the fifth degree of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, which is G, all right? Um, and if you actually, it's really clever the way the circle of fifths work. If you look at it, then that chord one, four, and five is almost like a pie slice, if you want to call it that, um, of the chart, and they're right next to each other, and that works for all 12 keys as well. So it's really easy for you to figure out what chords one, four, and five are. And again, there's a, there's plenty of reasons why you need to know that information, but uh, it's not for this video. Other things circle of fists are used for is probably modulation. Some people use it to figure out bass lines and stuff like that as well, but it really is such a versatile tool. Anyway, but we're here to talk about relative majors and minors. So I've covered all that and given you some extra reasons to, to use the circle of fifths. So that's us for this video. So thanks very much for your time. Have a brilliant day and I'll speak to you later. Cheers.